breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on The Glitter Boys. Two years ago, almost to the day, NPC and I sat down. We stared deeply into each other's eyes. We looked almost immediately away. <laughs> and we started and we, we started this podcast. And I I think this is one of the the longest, most prolific projects I've I've ever been a, a part of. That was just, you know, for fun, not not for you know, not for work and not for this and not for that, but just just something that I I, I love deeply. And I, I, I have, I've never been a part of anything like this before, and I, I love it so. And today, what we'd like to do is NPC and I would like to go back and read some of the things you've, you've all said about us uh, here on the air. And just thank you all for taking the time to review us and give us that love and encouragement that has meant so much to us over the, the course of this podcast. We really couldn't have done this without, without you all. Uh, there's, there's a part of and playing a, a game that that's older that you think I'm the only one who remembers this fondly. And it's so liberating to meet all of you on our discord and in the various ways that we meet all of you and to see that your passion and your fire for this game is still alive as well. And so we'd like to just take a, take a moment and acknowledge that today. Yeah. Thanks folks. Thanks for being on this journey with us again. Like you said, Matthew, uh, echoing that it, this has been a lot of fun <laughs> and I look forward yeah. to this being more fun as time goes by. Uh, you know, we're not always the most sage of people when we talk about <laughs> some of the subjects, <laughs> but I think we approach it from the lens of fans who, who you know, we accept that, uh, we can goof on things from time to time but i think as long as we're also goofing off then they sort of balance each other <laughs> also it should be noted as long as we're, we're speaking truths here to you our our audience i tend to goof a lot more <laughs> in fact i I'm, I'm sure some of the regular contributors of our discord are getting a little tired of well actually matthew like i really appreciate your passion for it but you are so wrong <laughs> i get a lot of those <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I mess things up all the time too. I think it's more of a <laughs> palladium as fans are really passionate about the things that they are into. And mm. as such, they will call you on your crap. And I say you as the collective view, meaning both of us, they will call yeah. us out on things that we get wrong and things that we get right. And I like that it's actually called out in fairly equal doses. So it's, it's a good, healthy balance. Yeah. Or you know what? I'll, I'll even step so far as to say that I would say we're called out more for positive things. than the yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say this is some of the most positive Internet correction I have ever received. Um, this is not the uh, the 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 caps, no caps. Well, actually, this is this is way different. Yeah. And I, it's just because we're all. I feel like the Palladium fan base is what is what the D and D fan base used to be like. Uh, more, more of the the Stranger Things kind of kind of feel of it when you were still running from the jocks, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> like we we're, we're there's there's a feeling of it that we're all in this together. Like we and this is not we we've talked about this before. D and D has become the mainstream hotness. And like I, I, I still feel like we were we're playing the 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 real deal. This is the the insider knowledge, you know. Yeah. Well, without further ado, let's dive in. We're going to go through some of the wonderful reviews that we have received. Well, we're going to go through all of the reviews that we've see, received. And fortunately, they're all wonderful, <laughs> and we want yeah. to read them aloud and personally thank each of you for for taking the time to say something positive. Or really just saying something at all. Yeah. 
Well, let's start it going with uh, Stone Cold Steve Boston. <laughs> I said, gentlemen, great job. Really enjoyed the content here. Great information and opinion for Palladium fans. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. We, we really enjoy making it. Um, our opinions are probably a bit more accurate than our information. <laughs> but, you know, like I feel like with Palladium, we can get away with that because Palladium is... A vast world where we unleash our imaginations, and it's sometimes self-contradictory, and thank God for that, because otherwise I'd be called out a lot. You know, unleashing your imagination can be a dangerous thing. <laughs> Some people's <laughs> imaginations are way more powerful than others, so... Yeah. And I think Palladium's games are a good way to, to bridle that. Yeah. The next win is from Ed Braindead. Uh, Palladium goodness. This podcast is great. Thank you. I'm so happy to have a great podcast about the Palladium RPGs. There's not enough of them. Keep it up with the great content. I 100% agree, Ed. There's not enough. Yeah. I I just, um, I, I feel like it, it it's coming back. I, I do. I feel like this, this will. And I, I like to think that Outside of the the actual working for Palladium bubble, we're 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 a bit at the forefront of that. We're we're like, like yes, hey, do you, do you remember just ding? So yeah, we're glad you noticed. Um, this one is from CB Mech. You mean I'm not the only vagabond player? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite podcast about riffs. Great info and given in an engrossing way. Honestly, the only thing I could ask for is any views on the new quotation marks Savage Riffs version. Love this cast and can't wait for more. Thank you. This was probably from before we did our Savage episode. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Please feel free to look in our back catalog. You, you will find exactly <laughs> what you're looking for. And it has been referenced several times in several different. Uh, in fact, we just talked about it, didn't we? Again. We did. We, we had yeah. Sean, uh, Sean on from mm -hmm. Palladium. Sean, Kevin's new business partner at Palladium Books to promote the Titan Robotics Kickstarter. Now, Sean... Uh, if you haven't listened to that, so a real quick synopsis, Sean is the head of the Savage Rifts product over at Pinnacle Entertainment, who makes the Savage Worlds game. And now he's also the business partner at Palladium Games. So there's now going to be a lot more crossover with mm -hmm. content. Yeah, As there was with the recent Kickstarter where they had a, a goal to make a special um digital booklet that converts mm -hmm. all the stuff from the new Titan robotics books to the savage world system. Yeah. And I remember we said something back in the day when I, I re-listened to the savage Worlds episode about a week ago. And one thing that we mentioned was, or maybe it was in the juicer episode. I forget, but we had talked about the idea of trying to do our best that when we take a look at a, character class from palladium to you know in our our occ breakdown episodes like we've done with the brogue scholar and the vagabond and so on to do our best to also compare them with the savage world's incarnation and what you might expect we should try and do that more often we often forget because we kind of wing these <laughs> yeah yeah like we we yeah, we both work full time. More on that later. Yeah. So, uh, Mac, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Gareth Dragonsbane. A rift opens. Oh, I get to read this one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, you got lucky, man. This is a good one. It's a good one. Every so often at a nexus point of ley lines, a surge of power occurs and a swirling vortex opens into another plane of existence. What may come out, we do not know. But this time, we were lucky. A signal comes through from the past of a magnificent show dedicated to Palladium games. If you like or have any interest in Rifts, Robotech, or just role-playing in general, give these guys a listen to. They have great insight into running, playing, and the lore in the Palladium Megaverse. I think that one should have started off with, in a world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did my best to channel that movie guy there. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I I love the creativity of that one. That that just makes me so happy. And he really captured it too. Like it's uh and that's not patting on the back for Magnificent. He really captured the <laughs> the signal from the past and it, it, it feels like it. And it's just it's always such a relief to see that that signal from the past is still busy releasing books. 
Like, have you ever gone back to to find something only to find it's dead? Yeah. What yep. a thing it is to go back and go, oh, crud, I have 75 more books to buy. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot <laughs> of know? catching up to do. Yeah. And there's a lot of it that we haven't read. Oh, God. There's there's still so much. Like, we we're, we're, we have five, ten years of this still. <laughs> so even now, as we go through the content that they have produced, oftentimes we're coming to it fresh. Books yeah. that we may have seen or skimmed over but never actually sat down and read like for example the rift south america that was one Mm -hmm. that i had heard many references to and i'd seen bits and pieces of it but once i got to sit down and read it i'm like holy crap this thing is great why have i not known this book forever the the thing is is that we we have the buying power now that we did not have when Mm -hmm. we were like very young and you know first into this so So there's another line that Gareth says here, a signal comes through from the past. It, it is kind of, that's kind of how it felt. Like when we were doing half movies, will game, we were just constantly like palladium, 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 Palladium. Palladium. you know, could do that. Palladium. Palladium. (laughs) (laughs) It just kept popping back in our brains. And we're finally like, okay, palladium's calling to us. We got to do this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the old ones have spoken. <laughs> no. Yeah, I like that. The old ones have spoken. We should put that as a tagline on our show. Yeah, I like that. Um, so this one is by uh, Slink Mismack, and it's Just Found. Just found your channel. Been through a couple episodes. So far, I'm loving it. Nice to hear some good thoughts on the Palladium system. You guys are, excuse me for robbing your saying, metal as F you. Uh, money sign and lots of exclamation <laughs> points. Metal as fuck. Keep up the great content. I would love to hear your thoughts on sending the Zentradi or Marduk. Marduk? Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. I, I am I am Harmony Gold all the way. Like I, I my deep lore is lacking. Uh, to the Phase World universe to start their own empire. All right, Slink. Here's the thing. The Zentradi into Phase World. Like, I, I don't, I think, I think some of the Zentradi capital ships are just, they're so big and there's so many, like there's, there's literally a million Zentradi. So, uh, Zentradi capital ships. And I think, what was it? We commented on this in phase world, like center was, you know, like 5 billion people. Like the, that's, that's the sprawling hub of phase world. Five was the size people. of... Yeah, it was the size of, uh, um, you know, the the planet in the 80s. So I think the Zentradi would win. If you, if you want me to summarize this, I, I think the Astral Knight, the uh, the Cosmo Knights would, would get up there and they'd be like, striking hero poses, and the Zentradi would open fire, and that would be the end of that. Um, <laughs> just because you're talking capital ship weapons. That said, I think from a mechanical standpoint, if we converted them directly, we just took... Raised the Zentradi out of Robotech, dropped them into Phase World, they mm-hmm. would be destroyed in a few rounds because the MDC levels do not compare to Phase World's damage. The, the Phase World damage output is, it is a tier above everything. Agreed yeah. until you start dealing with Zentradi in their ships. If we're talking like on the ground or in mm-hmm. battle pods, yes, agreed. But we're also talking about everyone else in their ships. <laughs> so yeah. The Zentradi wouldn't be the only ones with spaceships in this game. Uh, who said it first? Uh, I, you know, we have a lot of uh, military uh, historians in our in our Discord, which I'm sure will, will correct me on this. But it was uh, quantity has a quality all of its own. And I think when you start talking about a million capital ships, that's a lot of 20s in that pile of dice. However, don't forget. Phase world technology can cut through armor like it's nothing. So you've got United Worlds of Warlock bringing Mm -hmm. demon missiles, missiles that they fire into a ship and that missile explodes into a bottle full of demons and those demons run through the spaceship. You just Mm got to fire one at a ship, take it out from the inside. But they have to have a million of those missiles (laughs) is the problem. (laughs) Well, okay, here's the thing. You're talking all of the Zentradi at once. So if we're talking all of a thing at once, then we should also take into account all of their things at once. 
I suppose the real question is versus the mechanoids. Mm. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I think we know Two that the mechanoids, ships, right? the mechanoids massive ship has 1 billion SDC or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or 1 billion but you, hit you points. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, they, they, the Zentradi have artificial moons, the, the Robotech factories, and then they have Dolza's base, which is big AF as well. You know, that's that's a, a, a minor planet in its own right. So here's a challenge to listeners. Listeners who have access to the books and are down with running the numbers and are not going to give any side a specific unstated advantage, run the numbers. And see if the combined fleets of the three galaxies, using a book we haven't gotten to yet, are enough to stand up to the combined forces of the Zentradi, ported as is. My thought would be, however, that the Zentradi would have a better edge only because I think that anything ported from Robotech should be given more MDC than it has in its stock because the scale has yeah. risen. So that's my thought. Honestly, I missed his question, though, is uh, what would they do to start their own empire? They would absolutely start their own empire and be fine. They would gobble up little uh, little races like you wouldn't believe. They would be just be eating planets. Now, when you yeah. say Marduk, I don't know what you're talking about because I guess I haven't read that much of the Robotech, but I'm thinking Marduk, the Mesopotamian god, slayer of Tiamat. Nope. These are just <laughs> the original name for Zendrati. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't know that. Cool. Okay, here we go. Best Palladium Podcast. A Aww. friend introduced me to this podcast. I have since listened to almost half. This is the absolute best Rifts Palladium podcast around, and I look forward to each episode. Congratulations, Gooder Boys. Keep up the amazing job. This is from Railhammer, a.k.a. Devil Duck. Thanks, dude. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> We go on for like 15 minutes about the Zentradi. <laughs> you get a quack. <laughs> oh no, I'm picturing like, you know, a demonic duck with a rail gun hammer. <laughs> so that's kind of mm. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like uh, so, something out of like uh, the, the, the Warhammer, the, the jet powered. Oh, kind of more maybe like Ruby. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not, not Weiss. The uh, the the no specifically one. Ruby. She's got the no. She's got the scythe. No, who? Someone had the hammer. It was Ren's Ren's Nora love interest. Nora, yeah. Nora had the <laughs> Nora. hammer. Nora. Oh, Nora. I love Nora. So, Devil Duck, we we have uh, a heart hammer coming your way. <laughs> yep, yep. It's just gonna have to require a little bit of crossover with another intellectual property. All right. Uh, GP2112 says, great podcast. Really enjoy listening. Not much riff stuff going on in my area, so it's a real treat. I I feel this so incredibly hard. We didn't have riff stuff going on in, in our area until we made riff stuff going on in our area. Like, we, we, we had to do that. And I think one of the things we're trying to do here with this show is just... It's just reignited because it is such a wonderful, sprawling mess of a chaotic, wonderful universe where literally anything can happen that it's just you forget about it. Like we get we get more and more drilled down. We get more and more opiated and simplified. And it's just it's so wonderful to get this massive amount of options to play with. And yeah. I'm I'm really glad you enjoy it. I'm really glad that that you could feel it. And if you if you have the time, I would recommend uh, just trying to start something in in your area. If if enough people go on our Discord and start yammering at us that they can't get this going in their area just because they can't find people to play riffs, I, this is not a promise because NPCs like raising an eyebrow at me right now. <laughs> but we, we could do like a really, really simplified, this is how you do the the bare bones. This is how you run combat. I know we've already kind of started that, mm-hmm. but we could probably give you like a quick, succinct, would actually write out like a primer. Or I would actually write out a primer. <laughs> I've, uh, I'm not going to volunteer your time. Sorry. I've been working on something. Er. I've talked about it a little bit in the Discord server. I've been working on something. Uh, 
my own personal grand rules reference of stuff I, I, because it's you know all of the rules i would never post this online but i'm planning on putting it together and using it to run more games and if i can see that the description the way that i have written it works then i might submit it to palladium as here here is a rewrite of your rules. <laughs> this is the, here's a rewrite, and it's organized in a way that I think a lot of modern gamers today coming at games will be able to look at and understand how to play. Like it, yeah. it assumes their expectations is what I'm going for. Excellent. All right, the last one that we have today is from I Do Not Review nine nine two, the iconic Rifts podcast. Don't worry. You'll get the joke in the title after listening to it. If you love riffs, then this is the podcast for you. The hosts of the show are knowledgeable and entertaining. Hi, and, he's knowledgeable. I'm entertaining. And I must add, <laughs> we're knowledgeable, entertaining, and iconic. <laughs> <laughs> we say that word a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's because of the impact that riffs has had on our lives as gamers so much we go to other games and we play them and our whole time like we'll see things in a game and thinking oh that's just like x in rifts because mm -hmm. seeing almost every single main character class is like an iconic part of the identity of the property yeah um there is i don't know how many episodes i'm gonna have to say that and there, there's like there's there, there's nothing like it it is it is just r riffs Palladium, the, the whole thing is just, it's, it's huge and it's still there. And I, I can't, I can't speak highly enough about that. That is just, it's still there. Still turning along. Yep. And I'm really glad that we've got new ways to bring people in, I, you know, this podcast, of course, but Savage Rifts and yeah. all of the outreach that's happening there and the bridging of the communities, I think it's wonderful. Do you remember when looking for a community was literally like going down to whatever grocery store was nearest you with your uh, handwritten, hey, I want this, this, this thing. And then you Xerox it for like, I don't know, a buck. And you put that up in your game store's bulletin board. Yeah, I, oh man, we, <laughs> I remember <laughs> I living posting, in the future. <laughs> I remember posting an ad just like that. It was like a handwritten photocopied mm -hmm. at the library note. And I remember posting it at the convenience store in my neighborhood because they had mm -hmm. a little bulletin board where people would post their business cards and want ads. Yeah. I remember posting it at the grocery store just down the street because they had the same and then at the game store. And yeah. oddly enough, I got more people contacting me from the convenience store and the grocery store ad than from the game store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, yeah, this is just some of the feedback we've gotten and I'm looking at the thing and we're already closing in on half an hour, but, um, I just like to thank everyone who reviews us. It, it really does help. It helps the algorithm. It helps us get seen, um, liking, a liking a show and reviewing it really, really does aid us in our quest. Um, we're doing some new things now. There are some more options to, to aid us, but at, at the very base level, just saying, just saying, hey, this is something I enjoyed. We we really appreciate everything. It doesn't it doesn't have to be clever. And anything you want to put out there for us, we'd love to read. Yeah. If you've got ideas of characters or character classes that you've written up and you want uh, to get some feedback on them or some little bit of promotion, please send them our way. We did a character spotlight for a fellow who sent us uh, a character on Twitter. And that's right. With yeah. the muskrat. Lutters are not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Lutters. Yeah. So as we close this episode out, I finally want to get to something that I guess a lot of people may have been expecting, but I didn't even want to begin to go here until we were at least two years in. Because for me, that's that's the mark. Like two years. Oh, okay. We're we're actually doing this. We are going to be opening up a coffee page or KOFI. It's kind of like an alternative to Patreon where, uh, you know, the idea is buy me a coffee. We don't ever expect to make money off of this, but it would be nice to recoup some of the hosting costs. 
So if anybody wants to buy us a coffee, by the time this episode launches, I will simultaneously be launching a coffee page. Just follow the link in the show notes. And if you feel like it, we have some very, very basic levels. It's just donation based. We're not going to sell our souls here. <laughs> it's We don't really have anything physical to offer. The only real thing that we can give you is our thanks and a custom Discord title if you would like one. And you know, shout out to you occasionally online as a genuinely awesome person. Yeah. I'd like to speak really quickly on why we decided to go with, with uh, coffee instead of uh, some of the more you know recognized ones. And that is that um, they, they keep raising the, their, their fees yeah. on things like Patreon apparently. And it just, it, they, it keeps changing and that this has been a very stable creator centric platform, not just a way to make money off people trying to help creators. So yeah, we know it's kind of a hassle to create a new login, but we'd really appreciate it. And we thank you in advance. If you want other options to throw us some money to help with hosting, we have a web host. Uh, our audio host for the podcast is a place called Pinecast. And you can actually click the link that is in every episode show notes to go to our tip jar. And that will allow you to set up either a one time or if you want a recurring monthly fee uh, to just kick a few bucks our way and help pay for the hosting costs. We appreciate it. And you can also get our merch from Redbubble. So if you really want to walk around with our fucking amazing Glitter Boys logo on your shirt, <laughs> on your pants, on your butt, on a hat, on a sticker, on your laptop, anywhere, I, I've done all these things, then you can go to our Redbubble store. I, I would like to say I have actually worn my my Glitter Boys exercise shirt to the gym, and I have gotten complimented on the it's Lisa Frankness. Yeah, because it is it is a nice exercise shirt. It's like when you're sweating, it doesn't stick. You know, it's 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 very nice. I have gotten so many people to start up a random conversation with me when I've been out and about wearing either my Glitter Boys t shirt mm -hmm. or my pink Glitter Boys mask. <laughs> That's right. I forgot we had face masks in this store. They are wonderful. <laughs> I wear it everywhere. And people are always like, that's a really cool logo. What's that for? And I'm like, let me tell you <laughs> how big of a nerd I am. I know. And I, I love it. It's like, it, it, it's, it's super nerd cred. Because yeah. like, people are like, I'm super nerdy. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. What are you into? And, you know, they'll list their thing. And I'm like, that is amazing. And then I'll list all the things you would like you and I do here and like what, what it all means and like how deep down the rabbit hole we go. And I go, <laughs> oh, oh, you're <laughs> you are guys. an urn. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so if you want people to look at you and go, oh, <laughs> be just like me in my merch. Yep. Now that is how that's salesmanship right there. Hey, <laughs> that's how you sell things. That's a great pitch, man. <laughs> I am terrible at that. And if I made my living that way, I would starve to death. <laughs> I, I would too. I would too. Um, I would like to say briefly, like we will continue to like, this isn't, you know, this is just, this would be nice because we, we pay a lot of, of fees. And when I say pay a lot of fees, I mean, NPC pays a lot of fees, but um, like, we're still going to do this regardless. So oh, yeah. Uh, and anything you can would, would be very much appreciated. Yeah, if you could throw some bucks, help us pay for at least the web hosting. And, you know, if we make anything over that, then we'll be throwing it all at Palladium anyway, buying more yeah. books. <laughs> help us fund our Palladium addictions. <laughs> it, it's, it's a good addiction. It's the kind you can get behind. Oh, ooh, we need a new shirt. We'll podcast for Palladium <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone thank you so much for listening and uh y'all have a great day and hey thanks for all the 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 comments we really appreciate every last one of you we love you all thank you very much starships magic mystic martial arts romance all of these can be found in a cloak of blades by isaac share you might have heard my name before. I've done a lot of voiceover work for Breakfast Puppies. 
And I've recently released my first novel. It's available on Amazon as an ebook and paperback, and you can get it for free if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. I do hope you'll support my work as you're supporting Breakfast Puppies. And it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Have a good one. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, The Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time. Homie, we are getting good. We just did half an hour on 10 comments. <laughs>